Hey there, and welcome to another Health Essentials Podcast. I'm John Horton, your host. There's a look kids get that lets you know something bad is coming, and that it's coming fast. We're talking, of course, about the moments before they throw up. It's no secret that children throw up more regularly than adults. But why is that? And more importantly, what can you do to stop the vomit once it starts flowing, and maybe even prevent it from happening in the first place? We've got pediatric gastroenterologist Ben Freiberg with us today to explore this queasy topic. Dr. Freiberg is one of the many experts at Cleveland Clinic who pop into our weekly podcast to help us better understand how our bodies work. So grab a bucket if you've got a weak stomach, because we're about to dive into kitty puke. Welcome to the podcast, Dr. Freiberg. Uh, thanks for stopping by to chat. Thanks for having me. So my wife and I have three kids who all had their throw up moments uh, growing up. Actually, my youngest, Jack, uh, we just called him Yak for a few years and actually bought the school janitor, uh, Mr. Grimm, a Christmas gift because he had to clean up so much stuff. So, um, oh boy, yeah, it, it, he, had, he, had a, he had a rough go of it for a few years. But so before we even get into all that, the one question I have to ask what actually happens when 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 a when, when somebody throws up? I mean, what what's causing you to just kind of empty out the contents of your stomach? I mean, what sort of, what sort of triggers are at work? Yeah, so there's definitely a lot of triggers at play with this. You know, the most common thing that we think about is a GI bug. You know, you eat bad food, um, go out to a restaurant or a picnic, and then a couple of hours later. You feel that rumbly in the tumbly and just start yakking everything up and, you know, probably some stuff out the other end too, unfortunately. Um, so that's usually the most common thing that we see. Um, but there are definitely a lot of other causes as well. So we know that a lot of kids, a lot of individuals, they'll get motion sickness. So we know we have those um, little pieces in our inner ear that, that kind of monitor motion. And if they get out of whack, we can definitely get um, some episodes of vomiting medications can definitely cause us um, we know chemotherapy agents can definitely do that too so there's a variety of different things and what it ultimately is is our body's response to a noxious stimuli our body's response to a sensation that isn't right and it wants to get rid of it and with the stomach there's one of two ways that things can move it can either move forward or it can be expelled back up and if it's a signal that's getting sent that hey this is something bad this is dangerous this might harm us might kill us then our bodies will want to get rid of it and that's why we up chuck why do kids seem to be so much more prone to, to to throwing up i think there's a lot of factors that go into this you know definitely you know kids are more prone to getting illnesses you know they have a budding immune system so um they're they're getting experience to the environment, so they might be exposed to some of these um, GI bugs that can cause them to get GI sicknesses, uh, GI illnesses. And then just on top of that, like I mentioned, you know, there are some individuals that are just slightly more prone to motion sickness. Um, oftentimes, I see a lot of kids that, you know, like all of us, we see the food and we want to just keep eating. So they'll just kind of keep eating, not recognize their body's signal that, hey, you know what, time to stop. And they just stretch that stomach to the limit. And kind of like with those noxious signals, the body needs to relieve that stress. And one of the best ways to do it is just bring it back up. Are, are children even more prone to kind of, a, I guess, an, an emotional upchuck where you just get so upset that it just it, it kind of comes out too? Absolutely. We, we know that there can be a large um, emotional component to this. And, you know, the one thing I love to stress with my patient is that this isn't, this isn't anxiety. This isn't depression. This is emotions in general, where um, you can have some sort of exciting event happen that you just found out that you won the lottery, fingers crossed, <laughs> <laughs> or that you're going to a trip to Disney or somewhere else and you just become so excited and that emotional response leads to that that signaling process to happen that leads you to throwing up so i want i really want our viewers to really to really understand that this isn't just anxiety or nerves or anything like that this is just emotions in general 
Now, when we're talking about children and how, how they do throw up a, a lot more than adults, are, are there, does it, does it vary by age? Like as, as, as you're growing up? Yeah. So oftentimes we see like in the young infants that we see them spitting up a lot, not necessarily throwing up, but spitting up. But you know, oftentimes it just looks like so much. We, we describe it as throwing up. I had a um, lot where, going down my back when I was a, a father and tapping those, uh, tapping those backs. So <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And, you know, with that, you know, we call it infant reflux, but it's a combination of factors there where the stomach is pretty small at that age. And then the food pipe where it connects to the stomach isn't fully developed. So you don't have a good, um, a good ring or, a, a good barrier to prevent a lot of that stuff from coming up. And these kids, as they're these infants, as they're feeding, they're also sucking in a lot of air. So that's why we need to be burping them. And as the air is coming up, a lot of the uh, the formula or the breast milk that they just took in is also coming up there. So very, very common to see it in the young infants. And then in early toddlers, we all can also see it again. They're going through that phase, building the immune system, going out into the playgrounds, into pre-K kindergarten, where everyone's rubbing their noses and touching the tables and everything. So all those uh, lovely uh, viruses and uh, bacteria and everything get spread very easily there. So it's very common to see them getting a, a GI illness or other illnesses that leads them. And then as you get older, typically we see that things start to bounce out, but definitely we see um, a lot of individuals that might have um, emotional stressors going on. Again, whether it's stress, anxiety, or happy things that are coming up that kind of lead to a lot of these symptoms as well, or they go on and have um, um, issues with motion sicknesses, things like that. It's always, it's never pleasant. <laughs> So once that upchucking does kind of start, uh, what can you do to, to treat it and, and, and hopefully make it stop? It really depends on the underlying reason. You know, if this is some sort of GI bug leading to the, the kid throwing up, you really need to let it run its course. You know, the body is seeing this noxious stimuli, this, this, uh, this entity in the body that they really need to get rid of. So just let it run its course, make sure that the kid is staying really well hydrated um, and, you know, trying to get in as much nutrition as possible, recognizing that it might very well still be coming back up. Um, and if it's motion sickness, there are definitely over the counter medications that we can be using to help relieve some of the motion sickness. So if you know that you're going for a car ride, if you know you're going out in a boat, things like that, be prepared for that. Um, and then in terms of if it's related to emotions, you know, working on some of those emotions, trying to figure out, you know, what might be some of the things that can bring out some of these emotions that might cause some of these events to happen. You know, oftentimes we do need to work with a mental health specialist to help manage some of that to make sure that there isn't um, significant emotional barriers there that can lead to these symptoms. And as I described too, one of the other things that we often see is that the stomach just gets overstretched to the limit. So making sure that we pace our meals, don't eat too much. And there are definitely things that we can do, medications that we can use to help with that as well, especially if we are getting that full sensation, that poor appetite that's also associated with the vomiting, with the nausea. If you do have vomiting and your kid does start doing that, are, are there certain foods or drinks that, that you should kind of kind of give them afterwards to help the stomach settle down? Yeah. So the biggest thing is we want to make sure that the child is staying hydrated and, you know, not just with water, but giving them some sort of electrolyte balance in the fluids as well. So if it's a young child, um, something like a Pedialyte, or if they're an older teenager using Gatorade, Powerade, one of those drinks that has some electrolytes and sugars in them, making sure that they're able to maintain not only their hydration, but also their electrolyte balances there. Um, but otherwise, it really is, you know, giving foods or giving liquids that can, to your point, help settle things down. So oftentimes we talk about ginger based products. So like ginger ales, things like that, that can definitely help settle the stomach a little bit. Um, 
kind of similarly with diarrhea, we often talk about like a light diet or a brat diet, bread, rice, things like that, that might not be as irritating as, as aggravating to the stomach. Avoiding some of the spicy foods, some of the acidic foods that can definitely irritate the stomach lining as well that might lead to some of these symptoms. But as long as you keep it light, nice and simple, keeping them well hydrated, giving them their electrolytes, hopefully it should run its course and you'll see that the kid will ultimately kind of kind of let you know exactly what the next thing to do is, that they're ready for the next step. Now, those are great tips for, for when it when it starts happening. So is there anything you can do to, to prevent vomiting? It really depends on the underlying reason. So if we're talking about um, a GI bug, the best thing, don't keep that potato salad out for too long. <laughs> um, you know, wash your hands before handling foods, making sure the chicken is well cooked. You know, the plain, the typical things that we would think about in terms of, you know, regular uh, safe hygiene and food preparation. Um, again, if we know that this is a child that might be um, having a lot of these symptoms related to emotion, again, getting them connected with a mental health specialist so that they can help manage some of these things. If they are an overeater, making sure that they're pacing those meals. And like I described before, if it is somebody that has an associated poor appetite associated with some of their nausea, some of their vomiting, definitely come by, see us in GI, and there are definitely things that we can do, things that we can prescribe that can help a lot of these symptoms. Uh, such such helpful tips, Dr. Freiberg. That, 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 that's fabulous, and it kind of gives everyone a little bit of a roadmap there to, uh, to, to keep that from happening. Um, I, I guess one last question that kind of comes up is, when should you seek uh, medical help uh, for a child throwing up? Yeah, first and foremost, it's their hydration status. So if your child is throwing up, not able to keep anything down, particularly liquids, then they really need to be evaluated, need to be seen. They might need um, help getting the fluids into them. So through an IV or something like that to make sure that they stay well hydrated. Um, and then otherwise, as I described, you know, definitely checking in with your pediatrician, letting them know hey, my child seems to have picked up a GI bug. They can help uh, you manage those symptoms, making sure that you are giving the right fluids, the right foods to help make sure that um, it doesn't last too, too long. And then as as I described before, you know, if it is something that's a chronic type issue, let your pediatrician know. That way they can always refer to GI to evaluate them, make sure that there isn't any sort of underlying issue that might be missed. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned the, really emphasized the hydration part of it. Um, I We were talking earlier in, in about my youngest son, um, who, like I said, went through just a spell. And he had a time where he just, mm -hmm. he could not keep anything down. And we ended up uh, taking him in because he was getting that dehydrated and it they hooked him up to the IV and it was like watching a cartoon character reinflate. Like he just all of a sudden perked mm -hmm. right up within within minutes. So it it, it really yeah. can get serious if you if with your dehydration if you're throwing up that much, right? Absolutely. So keep a taps on your children. You know, really pay attention. Are they peeing? Are they urinating appropriately? It's a lot simpler when they're in diapers, but um, definitely kind of monitor to see is the is your child going to the bathroom or if they're a little infant when they're crying are they crying and producing tears simple things like that looking at their mouths do their mouths look really really dry or is it still nice and moist those are going to be the biggest signals to really let you know to hone in on yes my child is getting severely dehydrated it's time to seek urgent care well, we've, we've covered a lot of ground on this topic, uh, Dr. Freiberg, but is there anything that we, we missed or, or something you'd like to add? I know. I think we covered a lot of this. You know, like I described, uh, most of the time with these um, episodes of vomiting, they're usually related to some sort of GI bug or if they're a little infant, the typical what we would call infant reflux that thankfully does get better as they age. But if there's any questions, any concerns, definitely seek out uh, medical attention. If they are dehydrated, seek out urgent um, Excuse me. If they are dehydrated, seek out that urgent care, making sure that they that they do get the IV hydration that they need. And if it is something that it is prolonged, 
meeting with the pediatrician and perhaps even meeting with the GI doctor to see what we can do to help as well. Perfect way to wrap everything up, Dr. Freiberg. So uh, thank you very much for joining us today and I uh, look forward to having you back. Looking forward to it as well. Children throw up from time to time for a wide variety of reasons. When it happens, give them a hug and focus on keeping them hydrated. If the vomiting won't stop, call your pediatrician. But odds are your little one will bounce back quickly and be running around again in no time, maybe even before you finish cleaning up. Till next time, be well.